starting now. On this second Sunday in Christmas, we invite you to join us in worship using the service for morning prayer found in the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 80, page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. 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 To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs, for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the height of the hills are here. Hands have molded the dry land. 
The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 84, Quam Delecta, appearing on page 707 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 707. We will recite this responsively by half verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height. And the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God. And look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson this morning is a reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel, to Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For as long as the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in a dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people 
shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second lesson this morning is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the state? saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they sought the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Magi, the wise men, the three kings, different names, uh, we, we celebrate their arrival and the presentation of their gifts and their acknowledgement of Jesus as a king, if you will, uh, on the Feast of Epiphany, which is coming up very shortly this week. But on this last Sunday of Christmas, we turn toward their story because they point us, like the writer of the gospel according to John, they point us toward a deeper truth about who Jesus was and is. Uh, There's a lot of speculation about where the Magi came from. They clearly studied the stars, the ancient Persians, uh, were, were particularly known for that. It was a science among them to study the heavens. And so there is some thought that the Magi uh, may very well have been from ancient Persia, which we know today as the country of Iran. They arrive and they do an interesting thing. Having not received an announcement from the angels like the shepherds, it didn't occur to them to go any place other than to the capital city, to the seat of the king, and to ask where the newborn king might be found so that they could do homage to him. And we are told that as they started asking around in Jerusalem, word got to King Herod, and he was terrified, and all Jerusalem with him perfectly understandable. No man who has ever seized and held power willingly gives it up. And especially Herod, who had managed to displace his brother on the throne. And so Herod was terrified that 
these magi who studied the stars, who knew things that everyday people didn't know, had come directly to his seat of power in search of the new king. And so he sends for them and he begins asking them questions and he, he begins asking his own, um, he doesn't have magi, what he has are individuals who have devoted themselves to the study of scripture, to the study of law. In Jesus' time, they were known as the Pharisees, and he calls them and he asks them very detailed questions. Where is the Messiah to be born? Because in the scripture, the Messiah was sometimes referred to as God coming and ruling over his people. And so, Herod was able to make that association between Messiah and King. Where was the Messiah to be born? And he is told that according to the prophets, according to the scriptures, Messiah would be born in Bethlehem of Judea, a little town south of Jerusalem. And so Herod calls the wise men before him again tells them that uh, according to their wise men, the new king would be found in Bethlehem of Judea. He says, you go and you search for him. And when you find him, please be sure to come back and tell me where he is so I may go and do homage to. It doesn't take a dream with a message from the divine realm for anyone with wisdom to know that no king ever willingly kneels before another king. And so we're told at the end of the passage that the wise men return to their country by a different way. They don't go back through Jerusalem. They kind of sneak out of town quietly and return to their own country. I mentioned at the beginning of this that this story of the Magi, these non-Jews who represent for us, if you were, the entire Gentile world, all those people who do not already have a special relationship with the God of Israel, the Magi represent us. And in this story, they come, and as I said, they point us toward the deeper significance of the birth of this newborn king. They bring him gifts, and they bring him really interesting gifts. They bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, we still know what gold is, and it certainly comes in handy. Gold to be given to a newborn human child, even today, is a gift that's greatly appreciated and has consequences that will affect that child later in life. Frankincense and myrrh are not gifts that we give today. And they had particular significance at the time that Jesus was born. Both are um, products of nature, products of the Middle East. And frankincense was used, and in fact is still used today, as the main component of incense. And in the time when the Magi came bringing their gifts, frankincense was burned upon the altar of a god. Their gift of gold for a human child and frankincense for a god are the first places in scripture where those outside of the Jewish community acknowledge Jesus as God and human in one being. Myrrh is the most poignant of the gifts. Myrrh is a, a gum that was processed and used to embalm people's bodies at their death. It was smeared over them and they were wrapped in linen, in the linen shroud, 
and then placed in the tomb. And the myrrh uh, both helped to preserve the body for a time to slow the decomposition process, but it also had a, a very powerful and pungent odor and it masked the smell of decaying flesh. The gift of myrrh was a gift that acknowledged that this baby, like all of us, would one day die. Those of us who stand on this side of the resurrection know the importance of the physical death of Jesus because only that is the harbinger for the power of his resurrection from the dead. And so the Magi in bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh point all of us in the direction of the true identity of Jesus Christ and hold up for us a hint about the mystery of the purpose of his coming, that God was made man, as the early church fathers say, that man might become God. Not that we become God, but that we, through the Holy Spirit, which we are able to now carry within us, now are able to encompass both human and divine natures all at once. And the ongoing process of God in our lives through the Holy Spirit points us in the direction of the ultimate purpose of God in being born, in living with us, living for us, dying for us and rising for us. That in the gift of the Holy Spirit that we receive, we now have a capacity that is beyond only human nature to be transformed into the image and likeness of the one who created us. Like the gospel according to John, the wise men point us back to in the beginning, the original purpose and intention of God for all creation and for our lives, that we would be a perfect reflection of our creator. And so with Paul this day, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? Thanks be to God for the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to join with us in an acclamation of our faith as stated in the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. See the fire to keep you warm. See 
The prayers of the people this morning are given in Form 3, appearing on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those for whom continuing prayer has been requested, including Ron Mishko and family, Suzanne and family, Theodora DeBaz, Fran Myers and family, Sam Auble, Liz Russo, Robert and Jean Wallace, Amy, Jim Pender and family, Janet, Jody and Juan, Brian Flory, Brittany, and for all who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to all the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.